you know, put a little swivel and, and have the torpedo sinker kind of going that way, but, you know, it's just personal preference. I mean, that way is great too, but sometimes, you know, the line tends to twist more. Uh, with this, I guess your only issue is sometimes if there's too much structure on the bottom, you know, you might find it with this, but hopefully with a torpedo sinker, it's going to try to bounce over. Um, now, here's kind of how I have mine set up. I use what's called a trap rig. Now, I've been on plenty of boats where guys give me a hard time about using a trap rig. As a matter of fact, almost every trip, hey, <laughs> there's a couple right there. <laughs> but uh, the reason I use the trap rig is because, uh, I mean, it's real simple. How many of you guys have ever dropped a bait down, you bring it back up, you know it was a hell of a bite because it kind of did the thud thing, and then you pull up on your bait, you bring it up, and what do you see? Or rake marks. You know, rake marks is a classic halibut bite. They latch on and they just kind of do that thing. Why? Because there's no hook in the back, you know. He grabbed it right, you know, if you got your sardine like this, you got the one hook, single hook, he grabs it like that, what's going to happen? Nothing. Unless, of course, he just went, sucked it all over the back. So, I use this rig because basically no matter where the fish bites, well, nine times out of ten, there is a little spot where it is. sometimes I can get you, but... Uh, nine times out of ten, you're going to hook the fish. So whether he bites it in the front or whether he bites it in the back, you're getting that fish. And that's what I'm all about. I'm all about putting more fish on the deck. I don't like to lose a fish. I don't, I don't like to pull up with a rake mark. You know, I don't like to pull up with just a head. So this is how I do it. Um, and then, you know, you just kind of simply attach it like this. And it makes it, you know, real simple. You can kind of transfer, you know, use change rigs, whatever you want, that kind of thing. Now, the reason I like to use the Spectra is, for me, you know, what I've learned, the Spectra seems to, you know, slice through the water better. I, I don't know what it is, but it just seems to keep the bait down with, obviously, with a heavier weight as well. It keeps it right in the bite zone, because a lot of guys, when they throw a torpedo on there, some guys like to use the three ounce or the two ounce or whatever. I use a heavy. Here's what I use, religiously. I use an eight ounce. Um, I learned from uh, a couple of the best halibut fishermen that I know, uh, Pete Wachowski at Just Fishing with Pete, I'm sure a lot of you guys know him. Doug Lowry sitting right back there, he taught me a lot about fishing halibuts, excellent halibut fisherman. Um, and so what I've learned in watching people on boats is when they fish the lighter weight a lot of time, especially if they're fishing heavier line, the, with, with the lighter weight and the heavy line, the, the heavier the line creates the drag weight. And that, coupled with the torpedo, a light one, it'll just kind of, you know, the, the bait will come up off the bottom. Now what happens is, you know, I'll look at somebody and I can tell by the, you know, <laughs> the angle of their line that there's no way that they're near the bottom. And I'm, I'm asking, hey, are you on the bottom? Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm on the bottom. Yeah, why don't you lift up on that rod and see? They lift up and nothing happens. <laughs> you know, when you lift up on the rod and you're on the bottom, you know, you have, you have that little thud and you can feel it. And so... In my experience, I like to use the heavier weights like that. And if you watch a lot of the commercial guys that are fishing them, um, I mean, just watch them. Just watch the weight size that they all use religiously. None of those guys are ever fishing for that I've seen, you know. And those guys are normally using about 30 pound floor. That's what I use. The floor too, for me, it, it helps, you know, because usually when you're on the bottom, sometimes you're going to go by structure and whatnot when you're, you know, trying to hunt the hell is. The floor has really good abrasion resistance, so that's another issue. You know, sometimes if you're using the regular monofilament, you know, it's got memory, and after a while, you know, maybe you'll hook that fish and you got a little stone or something you hit, you know, and maybe when you're pulling the thing up, maybe it just go snap off. But with that, it seems like it just it, it holds on a lot better, and uh, it's better when fighting fish, in my opinion. Um, what else are we going to talk about here? It's, Oh, I got to share this with you. This is hysterical. I get a call from one of my buddies one day. He says, "Hey, a friend of mine. He's this techie nut. He's got all these video cameras. And he's going to videotape halibuts. And he's going to have this party, and we're all going to go watch it and watch the video footage of uh, the halibuts while they're fishing them. He's got a camera on his boat. He's got a light on his line with a camera, and all this crazy stuff, right?" I said, okay, you've got to call me on this. This is, this is amazing. i got to see this. So a week later, I get the call. He's like, okay, he's got the video done. you got to come see this, right? So I'm watching this videotape just in awe. This guy did an incredible job. I wish I had the tape because you guys would not believe it if I showed it to you. 
So I'm watching this, and the guy's fishing a trap rig, he's fishing a torpedo, brand new gear, the whole thing. He ended up getting, over the course of about an hour and 45 minutes, he got roughly about 12 halibut bites. And three of the bites, you would never believe what the halibut's ate on the three bites. Can you guess? Anybody guess what the halibut might have been chewing? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Torpedo sinker. Three times the halibut ate the torpedo sinker. I swear to God, I watched it. I had him replay it a few times because I didn't believe it. So last week I'm on a trip on the Icon. You know, they got the halibut derby thing. And uh, so they unfortunately had this real tiny bait, you know, and I was kind of bummed that I asked him. Put the hook on so he gets me when he hands it to me. And I'm like, yes, this is going to be the winner. I can feel it. So sure enough, I drop down. It wasn't even two minutes. I mean, just not that This is a big one. So uh, anyway, you know, I start to wind into it. Me personally, I don't like to do all this, you know, uh, you know, all that <laughs> dodger stuff. You know, I just, I let him chew it. And I kind of give it a few seconds, let him chew it. And sometimes I'll pull it back a little bit just to make sure he's got it in. Because sometimes if you pull it away, it'll piss them off even more. And they're like, they're going to want to attack it more. So I'll sometimes do that little thing, and then I'll just kind of go down and then put it in gear, give it like a four or five pound, start winding. So I got this fish on, right? I know he's over 20. And I'm like, oh, great, this is perfect. You know, I'm going to win this day. Yeah, cool, cool. So after about 30 feet, all of a sudden it just goes, joint. I was like, what the hell? Because for me, it's like pro football. You know, a receiver touches the ball, he should catch the freaking ball, you know? Same thing with a trap rig. If you get bit, you should catch the freaking fish, you know? So I pull the thing up, and I know it was a hell of it, because he's shaking his head, he's going, you know, I've caught plenty to know. I bring it up, my bait was not touched. There was no marks on the bait, no nothing. So I went home, and I'm racking my brain. I'm talking to the captain, what the hell? And he's like, yeah, I saw you. What the hell happened, man? You know? And Sean's looking at me like, Surprise, dude. So I went home and I'm racking my brain for like two days and I can't think of how in the hell did I lose this fish that I remember the tape. I'm like, it had to be it because I just put on a brand new ring. It was a, look at these freaking things, they're shiny, you know? And that thing gets the sunlight with the sand kicking up over the top sometimes. Yeah, hell, those aren't smart, you know? So I was thinking about it and I guess that's probably what happened to me. So, not ashamed to admit it. <laughs> All part of fishing. Okay. You know, I'm trying to figure out how I can stick and trip. I want to album, <laughs> Uh, like going, what the hell was I doing okay, wrong? Okay, what else? Yeah. Um, with that line. Okay. Yeah. I already talked about hook set. I mean, that's all personal preference. I mean, some guys even leave it in gear. Uh, they'll leave it right in the rod holder. And so, you know, when the halibut bites and goes down, and then with like a big torpedo like I use, you know, that thing kind of jams a hook in them. It's a lot of times an automatic hook set. But, you know, it's all personal preference. I mean, I, I like to kind of feel it and kind of be into it, you know, and just kind of go with it. That's, that's been my experience. Um, what else, what else, what else? <laughs> gaffing. Um, gosh, gaffing. Uh, yeah, I, I had a bad gaff experience, actually, uh, last week. Uh, we were fishing over a point from a good buddy of mine. He, he hooked a, about a 26-pounder. And, uh, you know, it was coming up, and I was trying to coach him. That's the other thing. When you're reeling these fish in, I'm sure all of you know, you don't want to crank them up too hard. I mean, you crank them up too hard, and you get them kind of going vertical. I mean, they're more apt to spit the hook out. I mean, that's when all the problems happen. The other thing is once they get on top of the water, they're going hog wild. I mean, they're, they're trying to shake that hook out. If you just kind of be mellow with them. I mean, even though I'm not a finesse fisherman, those of you that know me, I'm pretty amped up when I fish yellowtails and all these other things. Halibut, I try to relax because, um, like I said, if you get them going vertical, it's a problem. So you just want to kind of finesse them. Just kind of bring them up nice and easy, nice and flat. And then, I mean, for me, the best gap spot is, is uh, you know, the belly, obviously. You know, you just, when they come up, you just, you know, just kind of lift up on them. Some guys like to do the head poke, but the problem with that is, you know, the hardest part of the halibut is the head. So sometimes it works, but I've seen more guys missing that way than not. So I try to go for the stomach. Um, when, anyway, back to the story. When the guy caught the 26-pounder, um, I had slipped. Uh, on the deck, there was a squid laying there, and I wasn't paying attention. So right when I went to Gap, it kind of went, you know, kind of leaned back like that, and the halibut went like that. And of course, he got pissed off and went back down. 
And then, unfortunately, I got to admit, I got a little nervous, you know, because my buddy, and we saw that fish, you know, 26 pounds like that. And so, come